Okay, these notes are on 2.3 drawing conclusions and 2.4 congruent supplements and complements. So go to your next right page. We're going to set up the first notes, 2.3 drawing conclusions. The essential question is how can I draw my own conclusions? And then draw your vertical line. There are five procedures for drawing conclusions. The first one is you need to know and memorize your theorems, definitions, and postulates. Keep these in a place where you're constantly be able where you'll constantly be able to refer to them when you need them. The second thing is you need to identify any key words or symbols that are given to you in the either the givens or in the drawings. Number three, think of all the theorems, definitions, and postulates that you know that will relate to those key words and symbols. Number four, then you're going to decide well which theorem, definition, or postulate will allow you to draw some sort of conclusion. And then step five, you will draw your conclusion and justify with a supporting theorem, definition, or postulate, either in a two-column proof or in a paragraph proof. Let's try an example or two. So what's important here is sometimes we're given the givens and then we're given a proof or a conclusion statement and we're asked to actually prove it. But it's important that we can also make our own conclusions. So we're going to follow the five steps that we just talked about. Take a look at this picture. Take a look at the given. The given says that line AB is perpendicular to line BC. Okay. So the key words in there, the key symbols, is that we have two lines and that they're perpendicular. That symbol means perpendicular. So if we think of the theorems and definitions of postulates that we already know, last time we learned that perpendicular lines intersect at right angles. So based on that theorem, we might be able to draw a conclusion. The conclusion might be, well, since perpendicular lines intersect at right angles, we can say that angle ABC is a right angle. Okay, here's another example. We have this picture. We are told by our given that angle DEF is complementary to angle HEF. Okay, remember what complementary means. Complementary means that if you add them together, they will equal 90 degrees. Okay, so we have our symbols. We've got the angle symbols. Complementary adds up to 90. So we think back to the theorems we know. We learned a theorem just last time that says, well, it was a definition that says two angles whose sum is 90 degrees are complementary angles. So we can always reverse definitions. So we could also say that since these two angles are complementary, then they form a 90 degree angle. So we could say the angle they form, the measure of Angle DEH, the angle they form when added together, equals 90 degrees. Okay? So go ahead, this is the end of this set of notes, so go ahead and stop and do a summary. And then you're going to turn to your next straight page and we're going to take one more short set of notes. Okay, on your next right page, go ahead and title your notes 2.4 Congruent Supplements and Complements. Your essential question is how can I prove angles are congruent using four new theorems? We've already talked about three theorems up till now. We're going to introduce four more. Draw your vertical line. And let's take some notes. All right, the first theorem says that if angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. So let's take a look at this picture and see what that means. We're told two things. We're told that angle 3 is supplementary to angle 4. That means if I add them together, I'm going to equal 180. We're also told that angle 5 is supplementary to angle 4. So if I add those two together, they will also equal 180. 
So therefore, since they're both, since both angle three and angle five are being added to angle four to equal 180, we can now say, because of this theorem, that angle three is congruent to angle five. They have to have the same measure. The next theorem states that if angles are supplement to congruent angles, then they are congruent. So let's see what that means. Look at these givens. It says angle F is supplementary to angle G. So if I add those two together, I will equal 180. It also says that angle H is supplementary to angle J. So if we add those two together, that will equal 180. Then this is really important. It also says that angle G is congruent to angle J. So therefore, according to this theorem, we can now say that angle F is congruent to angle H. They have to have the same measure because they have to add to the same measure to equal 180. So angle F is congruent to angle H. The last two theorems are variations of the first two theorems I just gave you about supplementary angles. They say the exact same thing. Take out the word supplementary and change it to complementary. Remember that complementary means they add up to 90 degrees. So look at the first one. If angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. So if I have two different angles and they are both complementary to the same angle, they both add up with that angle to equal 90 degrees, then that means those two original angles are congruent. The next one says, if angles are complementary to congruent angles, then they are congruent. So think about the last one we just did on the last page. If I have two angles, and they're both complementary to two other angles, and those two other angles happen to be congruent, then those first two original angles must be congruent, because they have to add to the same measure to equal 90. So that's it. Go ahead and stop. Write your summaries for both sets of notes if you haven't already, and I'll see you next class.